Well, growth continues to happen here at Ware, and we're going to go inside 900 horsepower mobile boiler room today with Stephen Taylor here on the Boiling Point. Well, we are with a familiar face, Stephen Taylor, on the Boiling Point, and I'm always excited to have him. We're going to be talking a little bit about the 900 horsepower rental. Right now, the 900 horsepower is actually under construction. You might even hear some banging and beating going on, so uh, we'll get through it. But, Stephen, why don't you take us through this big old beast. Tell us a little bit about why that you uh, wanted to, to build this uh, for the customers um, and maybe how it's going with um, some of the other rentals that we've, that we've built. Well, we, you know, we always try to go bigger, and this right now is the biggest thing we can get, uh, 900 horsepower into a 57-foot trailer. Uh, a couple of things we did a little different that we're doing different than, than a lot of the industry does. We started out with a water softener. We're, we're going 100% uh, capacity on the water softener. We find that we put these bigger units in jobs, we're either adding to a system or the, a, a system where it's direct injection, steam is direct injection, we have no return coming back. If we don't put 100% uh, as water softener size for 100% capacity, then we have trouble with hard water or scaling. They have to overtreat with chemical. It creates a lot of problems for the customer they don't need to be dealing with. So we, we've overcome that by putting a really large water softener in here. Same thing with our derator system. When we have 100% makeup, we have to size the spray head in that DA for 100% makeup. It's the same issue. If we don't do that, they've got to overtreat with sulfite. We have oxygen issues, just a lot of issues the customer doesn't need to be dealing with. We take care of that on the front end. The other problem we have with these units, this boiler is 250 pound design. Part of the problem we have is we never know what pressure the boiler is going to be operating at until we get it on the job site. To, to counteract that, the feed water pumps, they're, they're set to operate at a pressure on the curve on that feed water pump. That's where they want to operate at. The boiler may be running at 100 pounds on this job and 225 on the next one. Those pumps won't take that. So to overcome that, we put variable speed drives on there. So when we put a, a pressure transmitter on the discharge line of those pumps, have a controller on there, and then we set the pressure for the pump, and the variable speed drive will set that pump at whatever pressure we set it at. So that, that another problem we've overcome just with controls and technology and these, these new, new boilers. You know, as far as, um, I mean, it is a 900 horsepower, but in the past you typically had to do like an 800 horsepower skid. What is the advantage to doing something like this? Yeah, it, 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 it's a good point. It, with an 800 skid, you take it to the job site, you have to unload it off the trailer, or, if, or you have to rent a trailer to leave it on. Then they have to build a shelter over it. it it's not inside, so if it's in, up in the north, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Kentucky, with this kind of weather we're having, it's freezing outside. Everything freezes up. They have to heat trace, insulate, build shelters over it. Just a lot of work on the job site. Where with this thing, it's all in, in, enclosed. It's all insulated. It, the heat's already here. We don't have that issue. It, it makes the installation on the job site a lot simpler and a lot easier for the customer. As far as the, the building of the trailer, I noticed like the stainless walls and maybe some of those other fine Yeah, we've, we've, we've done some things on these trailers. It's a standard for us now. We, you, we Originally, we put checker plate on the floor, um, and then we'd put steel on the walls. Every time the unit came back, we want them to look really nice when they leave. So when they came back, we'd paint the walls white. We'd paint the floor gray. Well, after about you know eight or ten times of this, then you start getting a lot of buildup of paint and a lot of chipping, just a lot of issues. So what we've done, we put a stainless steel liner inside. Don't ever have to paint it. It doesn't get dirty. If it gets dirty, it's really easy to clean. The other thing we've done, we've put Linex on the floors and we run that line X up the wall so that seals those walls. We don't have the floors riding out. We don't have to paint it. It looks good all the time. Just things like that that's a lot more money on the front end, but when this unit, the life of this unit, 5, 10, 15 years, it's gonna pay for itself in lack of maintenance. We don't have to do that maintenance to it. And the floors actually, they're not slick either. That's something else. That, no, that, that, that really line X floor, it's, it's a lot better than, than painted um, checker plate, the chainer, painted checker plate, you get a little bit of diesel fuel on it or, or even water. It gets slippery and it's, it's really kind of dangerous to walk on. This has a real rough surface to it. it you can pour whatever you want to on there and it's, you still get a good grip. It's good stuff. Maybe we get into the guts of the, of the boiler room, if you will, and maybe talk a little bit about um, the boiler itself and then um, the burner. Uh, Again, the, the boiler we're putting, it's got XID tubes in it, so it has ferrules inside those tubes. Gets a lot better heat transfer than a slick tube does. Um, some other things we do to, to hold the heat down in here, 
Uh, we put a, um, a coating on the outside of those doors. It's an insulated spray-on coating uh, that does a really good job for us. We do the same thing with the front of the boiler. FDR duct's gonna go here. That's gonna be insulated. Uh, limb field burner, again, high efficiency, uh, high turn down, uh, low maintenance for the customer. Once we, uh, auto flame controls, once we set it up for the customer, they don't have to worry about linkages coming loose. They don't have to worry about uh, O2s going up and down. The thing is, it's, it's really self-contained, does a great job for them. Very efficient, saves the customer a lot of money. Controls wise, uh, a couple things we do. We went ahead and put uh, differential pressure transmitters on the boiler itself for level control. And then that feeds right off the, the, the controller going back to the pumps. Does a, does a really good job, holds that level a lot better than a, a standard McDonnell Miller with a 7B switch in it. it. It just does a lot better job for us. I'm kind of into the cool factor, and so this is a very cool factor that you get yeah, to see the, the flame Yeah, the lens field is, is awfully cool. Typically on, on most burners, you have a, a peep sight that's into the side somewhere to look into that flame, and it's about that big, and all you can see is, okay, yeah, there's a flame in there. With, with this big opening, you can look in there and you can see what the flame is doing. You can see the fingers coming out. You can see whether it's touching the wall. You can see how far it's back in there it's going. It really gives you a great view of exactly what the flame is doing that whole time that, that unit's burning. How about gas, gas pressure on the unit? Um, what do you need? We, we, we need about 12 pounds into our regulator to feed this unit. Uh, again, the, the, these are pre-mix burners, so they're high gas pressure, high pressure drop across the head. Uh, that's how we get the high efficiency on that burner itself. Gas and oil. Gas and number two diesel fuel. Uh, either one, it'll burn either or. Stephen, what about the uniqueness of the uh, Siemens gas valve? Yeah, the, the Siemens, they've come out with a really neat design. It's a combination, two valves, uh, two stop valves, uh, gas valves, the bleed valve, normally open uh, gas bleed valve and a regulator all in one piece. Uh, so you don't have multiple pieces and normally that would take about five or six feet of the fuel train in order to get that junction in there and that piece is this long. It's, it's a great asset to, to confine space like we have here. And power coming in. They're 200 amp, uh, 480 volt service. These larger units, uh, most of the plants you go into or all the plants you go into have 480 volts so it's a straight 480 volt unit. They're not not combination 240 or 480, straight 480 volt, 200 amps. And all the connection sizes, um, got them on the outside of the trailer? Everything's on the outside. The steam comes out the side uh, on the top, and then the fuel comes out both sides. Uh, oil comes out the bottom, condensate return, makeup, uh, city water, kind of all that is on the bottom down low where they can get to it. And the power, obviously, is on the Power's front. Power's on of the, the front, right on the very front of the trailer. Okay. All right, well, there you have it, the 900 horsepower unit from where, um, guys, if you need a quote, give the guys a call, and uh, I'm sure they'll get you something in an hour, because that's what we say we're going to do. So appreciate you stopping by, hanging out with us again always, Steve, and we'll see you next time on The Boiling Point. Well, we always appreciate Steve and stopping by and letting us know what he's got going on in the rental division. Make sure you give the guys a call on that 900 horsepower boiler, and also like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and subscribe to that YouTube channel. We'll see you next time on The Boiling Point.